This video is part of an audiobook series featuring The Fourth Industrial Revolution, written in 2016 by Klaus Schwab. For more audiobooks, please visit my YouTube channel or my website for downloads. Chapter 4. The Way Forward The Fourth Industrial Revolution may be driving disruption, but the challenges it presents are of our own making. It is thus in our power to address them and enact the changes in policies needed to adapt and flourish in our new emerging environment. We can only meaningfully address these challenges if we mobilize the collective wisdom of our minds, hearts, and souls. To do so, I believe we must adapt, shape, and harness the potential of disruption by nurturing and applying four different types of intelligence. Contextual intelligence of the mind how we understand and apply our knowledge. Emotional intelligence of the heart, how we process and integrate our thoughts and feelings and relate to ourselves and to one another. Inspired intelligence of the soul, how we use a sense of individual and shared purpose, trust, and other virtues to affect change and act toward a common good. Physical intelligence of the body, how we cultivate and maintain our personal health and well-being and that of those around us to be in a position to apply the energy required for both individual and system transformation. Contextual intelligence, <clears throat> the mind. Good leaders understand and master contextual intelligence. A sense of context is defined as the ability and willingness to anticipate emerging trends and connect the dots. These have been common characteristics of effective leadership across generations, and in the fourth industrial revolution, they are a prerequisite for adaptation and survival. To develop contextual intelligence, decision makers must first understand the value of diverse networks. They can only confront significant levels of disruption if they are highly connected and well-networked across traditional boundaries. Decision makers must possess a capacity and readiness to engage with all those who have a stake in the issue at hand. In this way, we should aspire to be more connected and inclusive. It is only by bringing together and working in collaboration with leaders from business, government, civil society, faith, academia, and the young generation that it becomes possible to, make, to obtain a holistic perspective of what is going on. In addition, this is critical to develop and implement integrated ideas and solutions that will result in sustainable change. This is the theory is this is the principle embedded in the multi-stakeholder theory, what the World Economic Forum communities often call the spirit of Davos, which I first proposed in a book published in 1971. Boundaries between sectors and professions are artificial and are proving to be in increasingly counterproductive. More than ever, it is essential to dissolve these barriers by engaging the power of networks to forge effective partnerships. Companies and organizations that fail to do this and do not walk the talk by building diverse teams will have a difficult time adjusting to the disruptions of the digital age. Leaders must also prove capable of changing their mental and conceptual frameworks and their organizing principles. In today's disruptive, fast-changing world, thinking in silos and having a fixed view of the future is fossilizing, which is why it is better, in the dichotomy presented by the philosopher Isaiah Berlin in his 1953 essay about writers and thinkers, it is better to be a fox than a hedgehog. Operating in an increasingly complex and disruptive environment requires the intellectual and social agility of the fox rather than the fixed and narrow focus of the hedgehog. In practical terms, this means that leaders cannot afford to think in silos. Their approach to problems, issues, and challenges must be holistic, flexible, and adaptive, continuously integrating many diverse interests and options. Emotional Intelligence of the Heart As a complement to, and not a substitute for, Contextual intelligence is an increasingly essential attribute in the fourth industrial revolution. 
as management psychologist David Caruso at the Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence has stated, it should not be seen as the opposite of rational intelligence or the triumph of the heart over the head, but rather as a unique intersection of both. In academic literature, emotional intelligence is credited with allowing leaders to be more innovative and enabling them to be agents of change. For business leaders and policymakers, emotional intelligence is the vital foundation for skills critical to succeed in the era of the fourth industrial revolution, namely self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skills. Academics who specialize in the study of emotional intelligence show that great decision makers are differentiated from average ones by their level of emotional intelligence and capacity to cultivate this quality continuously. In a world characterized by persistent and intense change, institutions rich in leaders with high emotional intelligence will not only be more creative, but will also be better equipped to be more agile and resilient, an essential trait for coping with disruption. The digital mindset, capable of institutionalizing cross-functional collaboration, flattening hierarchies, and building environments that encourage a generation of new ideas, is profoundly dependent on emotional intelligence. Inspired Intelligence of the Soul Alongside contextual and emotional intelligence, there is a third critical component for successfully navigating or effectively navigating the fourth industrial revolution. It is what I call inspired intelligence. Drawing from the Latin spirare, or to breathe, inspired intelligence is about the continuous search for meaning and purpose. It focuses on nourishing the creative impulse and lifting humanity to a new collective and moral consciousness based on a shared sense of destiny. Sharing is the key idea here. As I mentioned previously, if technology is one of the possible reasons why we are moving toward a me-centered society, it is an absolute necessity that re we rebalance this trend towards a focus on the self with a pervasive sense of common purpose. We are all in this together and risk being unable to tackle the challenges of the fourth industrial revolution and reap the full benefits of the fourth industrial revolution unless we collectively develop a shared sense of purpose. To do this, trust is essential. A high level of trust favors engagement and teamwork, and this is made all the more acute in the fourth industrial revolution, where collaborative innovation is at the core. This process can only take place if it is nurtured in an environment of trust because there are so many different constituents and issues involved. Ultimately, all stakeholders have a role in ensuring that innovation is directed to the common good, if any major group of stakeholders feels that this is not the case, trust will be eroded. In a world where nothing is constant anymore, trust becomes one of the most valuable attributes. Trust can only be earned and maintained if decision makers are embedded within a community and making decisions always in the common interest and not in pursuit of individual objectives. Physical Intelligence of the Body Contextual, emotional, and inspired intelligence are all essential attributes for coping with and benefiting from the fourth industrial revolution. They will, however, require the vital support of a fourth form of intelligence, the physical one, which involves supporting and nourishing personal health and well-being. This is critical because as the pace of change accelerates, as complexity increases, and as the number of players involved in our decision-making processes adjacent to our own, increases, the need to keep fit and remain calm under pressure becomes all the more essential. Epigenetics, a field of biology that has flourished in recent years, is the process through which the environment modifies the expression of our genes. It shows uncontrovertibly the critical importance of sleep, nutrition, and exercise in our lives. Regular exercise, for example, has a positive impact on the way we think and feel. It directly affects our performance at work and, ultimately, our ability to succeed. Understanding and grasping new ways of keeping our physical bodies in harmony with our mind, our emotions, and the world at large is incredibly important, and we are learning more about this through the incredible advances being made in numerous areas, including medical sciences, 
wearable devices, implantable technologies, and brain research. In addition, I often say that a leader requires good nerves to address effectively the many simultaneous and complex challenges that we are facing. This will be increasingly critical in order to navigate and harness the opportunities of the fourth industrial revolution. Toward a new cultural renaissance. As the poet Rainer Maria Rilke wrote, quote, the future enters into us in order to transform us itself in us long before it happens, end quote. We must not forget that the era we, we currently live in, the Anthropocene, or human age, marks the first time in the history of our world that human activities are the primary force in shaping all life-sustaining systems on Earth. It is up to us. Today, we find ourselves at the beginning of the fourth industrial revolution, looking forward, and more importantly, possessing the ability to influence its path. Knowing what is required to thrive is one thing. Acting upon it is another. Where is all this leading, and how can we best prepare? Voltaire, the French philosopher and writer of the Enlightenment era who lived for many years, just a few miles away from where I am writing this book, once said, quote, Doubt is an uncomfortable condition, but certainty is a ridiculous one, end quote. Indeed, it would be naive to claim that we know exactly where the fourth industrial revolution will lead, but it would be equally naive to be paralyzed by fear and uncertainty about what that direction might be. As I have emphasized throughout this book, the eventual course that the fourth industrial revolution takes will ultimately be determined by our ability to shape it in a way that unleashes its full potential. Clearly, the challenges are as daunting as the opportunities are compelling. Together, we must work to transform these challenges into opportunities by adequately and proactively preparing for their effects and impact. The world is fast changing, hyperconnected, ever more complex, and becoming more fragmented, but we can still shape our future in a way that benefits all. The window of opportunity for doing so is now. As a first and vital step, we must continue to raise awareness and drive understanding across all sectors of society, which is what this book aspires to achieve. We must stop thinking in compartmentalized ways when making decisions, particularly as the challenges we face are increasingly interconnected. Only an inclusive approach can engender the understanding required to address the many issues raised by the fourth industrial revolution. This will require collaborative and flexible structures that reflect the integration of various ecosystems and that take fully into account all stakeholders, bringing together the public and private sectors, as well as the most knowledgeable minds in the world from all backgrounds. Second, building on a shared understanding, we need to develop positive, common, and comprehensive narratives about how we can shape the fourth industrial revolution for current and future generations. Although we may not know the precise content of these narratives, we do know critical features that they must contain. For example, they must, con they must make explicit the values and ethical principles that our future systems must embody. Markets are effective drivers of wealth creation, but we must ensure that values and ethics are at the heart of our individual and collective behaviors and the systems they nourish. These narratives must also evolve progressively higher degrees of perspective taking from tolerance and respect to care and compassion. They should also be empowering and inclusive, driven by values that encourage this. Third, on the basis of raised awareness and shared narratives, we must embark on restructuring our economic, social, and political systems to take full advantage of the opportunities presented. It is clear that our current decision-making systems and dominant models of wealth creation were designed and incrementally evolved throughout the first three industrial revolutions. These systems, however, are no longer equipped to deliver on the current, and more to the point, the future generational needs in the context of the fourth industrial revolution. This will clearly require systemic innovation and not small-scale adjustments or reforms at the margin. As all three steps show, we cannot get there without ongoing cooperation and dialogue, 
at local, national, and super supranational levels with all interested parties having a voice. We need to focus on getting the underlying conditions right and not just concentrate on the technical aspects. As the evolutionist Martin Novak, a professor of mathematics and biology at Harvard University reminds us, cooperation is the only thing that will redeem mankind. As the principal architect for four billion years of evolution, cooperation has been a driving force because it enables us to adapt amid increasing complexity and strengthens political, economic, and social cohesion through which substantial progress is achieved. With effective multi-stakeholder cooperation, I am convinced that the fourth industrial revolution has the potential to address and possibly solve the major challenges that the world currently faces. In the end, it comes down it comes down to people, cultures, and values. We need to work very hard to ensure that all citizens across cultures, nations, and income groups understand the need to master the fourth industrial revolution and its civilizational challenges. Let us together shape a future that works for all by putting people first, empowering them, and constantly reminding ourselves that all of these new technologies are first and foremost tools made by people for people. Let us therefore take collective responsibility for a future where innovation and technology are centered on humanity and the need to serve the public interest and ensure that we employ them to drive us all toward more sustainable development. We can go even further. I firmly believe that the new technology age, if shaped in a responsive and responsible way, could catalyze a new cultural renaissance that will enable us to feel part of something much larger than ourselves, a truly global civilization. The fourth industrial revolution has the potential to robotize humanity and thus compromise our traditional sources of meaning, work, community, family, identity. Or we can use the fourth industrial revolution to lift humanity into a new collective and moral consciousness based on a shared sense of destiny. It is incumbent on us all to make sure that the latter is what happens. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and visit my channel for more exciting content.